Hi, this is Tom Dreesen, and you're listening to The Sports Circus with my pal, Sal. And no one does it better. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Today's show is brought to you by Place Your Bet. If you like to bet on sports games and hockey, basketball, football, baseball, even boxing and golf, maybe the MMA, and you're looking for a real better's edge on the casino sportsbook, call Place Your Bet right now at 702-799-9935. Place Your Bet uses money movement to determine its picks, just like the casino odds makers. In fact, they're the guys the casino don't want you to know about. Call Place Your Bet right now, 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935, and subscribe or visit them at placeyourbet.vegas. Get winners and cash tickets today with Place Your Bet. And a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. All right, Rock, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give some props to the St. Louis Blues. I'm going to. I know there it, you go. That's I know it, it hurts, but you got to do it at this point. I just gave him a very quick round of applause. Here's another one. That's it. Yeah, that's only all they get. Be- that's all they get. And look, the only reason I'm doing it is because they had some jump in their step yesterday. They looked like they wanted the game more. I'm sorry. Boston looked very slow. They were lethargic. They couldn't do anything between the dots. St. Louis forced them to the outside. They played their game. And let's face it, at the end of the day, the redheaded stepchild of the Chicago Blackhawks ends up winning the Stanley Cup. So, again, for the St. Louis Blues, that's it. That's all you get. Yeah, I mean, you you have to look at it as it's not really fun if all you're doing is holding the redheaded stepchild back and watching him punch. You get bored after a while. It's kind of fun when they land a punch. It's fun when they land that. a punch. Then I want to see him get beat down. I know, I do too. But when they, it, it's almost <laughs> like that thing where you're building hope for them. Here, we're going to give you, you know, here, you had one. That's awesome. We'll build that hope. And then we'll just slap you down next year. Well, look, I'm okay with the idea of St. Louis getting knocked down. <laughs> but remember, in fact, on my bracket, you know, we had that bracket of 16 mm-hmm. like we do right for the playoffs. I actually had the Blues coming out of the West. I had Vegas losing to the St. Louis Blues, only because they were too heavy, they were very quick up front, and they're very seasoned on the blue line. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was very, very much in question as far as, of course, the goaltending, like everybody else was, but I actually had them coming out of the West over our local Vegas Golden Knights. So, to me, this was the right team out of the West. Yeah. And could they, could they have beaten Tampa? Well, let's face it, Tampa couldn't even get there in the first place. Tampa couldn't even get out of the first round. But could they have beaten Tampa for in a seven-game set? No way. No way. I had Tampa and St. Louis squaring off in Tampa hoisting, but guess what happened there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they got swept. Yeah. And here's the thing. The, that game was awesome. The first 15, 20 minutes I went back and watched, it was incredible that the fact that you have Boston. come. The Boston did come out all hellfire and vinegar, correct? If you That's watched what they game. were supposed to do. They sure. did. And then, they were home. Yeah, and Jordan Bennington just shut the down period yeah, yeah and, he shut him down he, he i mean he stood on his eyelids yesterday and and I, I give it up to him all right jordan the 26 year old rookie <laughs> i'll give it to you anyway <laughs> but but no no he he actually did quite well and and good for him you know it's and actually it's a nice story for jordan bennington and it was it was a kind of a cool roller coaster ride and i do like the way that doc emrick had spelled out his path and his his uncanny relationship with Barubi in the first place. I mean, it was weird how, you know, they they worked together before, then they were separated, so to say. Now they're back together. He gives them a shot, and guess what? The team turns around, and it was nice because, hey, maybe uh, there was a little bit of belief in him. Hey, look, I know this kid. Let's give him a shot, and that's exactly what happened. Right, because you're not going to rely on uh, Jake Allen for the, as his team. As the St. Louis Blues, you cannot and will not rely on Jake Allen anymore. This was supposed to be his year. This was supposed to be Allen took over the crease and did what he did, and he failed yet again. So you have you brought in a young kid, gave him a shot, and he ended up standing on his head for three quarters of the season and the playoffs. I mean, good on him, man. 
Well, good on him, but you know what? Even better on the St. Louis Sabres. How about those guys? How about the guys that came over from Buffalo? Right? So you, you kind of had a glimpse of, a, of what the Buffalo Sabres you know, had in their system, and they just couldn't put it together. So all of our listeners over on WLVL, cover the greater Buffalo and Toronto market, our Fox affiliate up there, you know, too bad that they couldn't hang on to them. But let's face it, Buffalo had made strides last year by making the deals with St. Louis, and I think actually both teams got better by making those trades. That's the one instance where I think both teams won. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Boss, or, uh, Buffalo is going to be solid next year, and you have St. Louis, Louis host, hoisting a cup. It's going to be ex- it's going to be a very very interesting year next year. It's going to be extremely interesting to me for multiple reasons. Why? Can St. Louis, can St. Louis hang on? It will Toronto finally turn the corner and become that team, become the juggernaut nah, that they're built to nah, be? Nah, will nah, nah. the Blackhawks come? Will the Blackhawks make a comeback? Will the Kings make a comeback? Who's going to tank the, the next year? Well, it's, I'll tell you one one move that I, I was really kind. I'm glad you brought this up because you know the Leafs. The Leafs have a ton of talent, as we know. And I do like the fact that the Leafs are reportedly discussing Patrick Barlow trade with the L.A. Kings. I mean, come on. If the Kings turned into the old Sharks, you know, where people go there to retire and just make a bunch of money, I think that's what it is. I mean, look, after, guard, yes. Right, exactly. After yet another first-round exit to the Boston Bruins, the offseason focus for the Maple Leafs was clear. Find a way to improve. Start with clearing some cap space, dumping high-priced players, Discussions started recently when news came out that defenseman Zaitsev requested a trade of his remaining five-year deal. He's making four point five million AVV, AAV, you know, big money. Now, soon after, another cap-clogging contract appeared to be up for grabs. Pierre LeBrun, right, <laughs> and, and he reports that Patrick Marlowe has been subject to trade talks as well. Do the Kings really need a thirty-nine-year-old has been though? I mean, look for me. Send them to L.A. because I'm not a Kings guy. I'm sorry. We're, we're in the L.A. markets. And let's face it, in, in all of our market for our listening audience, besides the Leafs and the Sabres and the Kings and the Ducks and the Hawks and the Coyotes and the Knights, et cetera, et cetera, we got a lot of team fan base. i got to tell you, the least loyal out of those is the L.A. Kings. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and they are the type. Nobody that, cares. He, they did care for a while, and that's kind of the thing with LA. Oh, it's what is. It's God. almost like Miami, where it's like, what have you done for me lately? Okay, awesome. Yeah. You brought a cup in. What have you done lately? Um, the interesting name I've been throwing around here and throwing around from the leaves is uh, Mitch Marner. Did you say leaves? Leaves. <laughs> you said leaves, the leaves, as in a pile of leaves. Yeah, light one, yeah. At this point, they were the le- they were pile of leaves on fire up till a few years ago. But oh, no, that's funny. Uh, I'm well, seeing a lot. I saw a pair of jugs that big. Two hillbillies were blowing on them. <laughs> Those were the leaves. <laughs> uh, Marner is a name I've heard thrown around a lot too. Really? Yeah, Mitch Marner possibly, and then uh, it's just it's going to be really interesting to see what the leaves the leaves do uh, this look at, year. Look, you did it again. Don't call me. It's going to be interesting to see what the Leafs do this year to kind of get over the hump. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to be back here in a few minutes on the circus. Last more to come. I'm going to try to bring in a special guest from the football world. This ought to be a very interesting conversation. Folks, don't go anywhere. Last more to come here at the Sports Circus. Back in a minute. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. <laughs> Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster Stell here with Bill Clement. We have special guests Robert F. Kennedy Jr., billionaire Jeff Hoffman, Mike Golick, Tom Flores, John Stockton, David Meltzer, Jim Tunney, Roger Craig, Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hayne, Kevin Green, Brian Erlacher, Jim Jeffco, Rod Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker, Steve Carby, Brett Saberhagen, Jack McDowell, Rich Cho, Danny McClain, Yay Barry, Grant Muir, Paul Dvorsky, President of the Vegas Golden Knights. It's George McPhee. Len Kamarowski, CEO of Cavaliers. Blake Green. Mickey Suda. Art Steele. Don Beebe. 
Ben Sullivan, Tom Dreesen, Pat O'Connor, Alan Glist, 43 Tony Awards, Walt Harris, Mike Crawford, President and CEO of the Hall of Fame, Louis Viola, President, Paramount Famous Production, Universal Worldwide Home Entertainment, Universal Studios Home Entertainment, Glenn Berman, Randy Funk, the Professor, Dr. Tommy John, Dave Robertson, Pat Williams, Brandon Schneider, Henry Bibby, Mike Bibby, Tim Donaghy, Dan Hughes, Marcus Johnson, George Lynn, Larry Center, Steve Berlander, Dr. Jen Welter, Steve Lamb, Gus Perron, Craig Colquitt, Paul Shortino, yes. my life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson. Jason Hook, guitar player for Five Finger Death Punch. Craig Bartok, lead guitar player, songwriter for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band Heart. Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports circus. Vinny from the Bronx Wanderers. Mark Schulman, drummer for Pink Cher, Velvet Revolver, TV Nicks, Cheryl Crow, Simple Mind, Richard Mark, Aaron Fink, Breaking Benjamin, Jason Hartlett, drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent, Matt Starr, drummer for East Fairly from Kiss, rock star Todd Kearns, Phil Buckman, the bass player in the rock band Fuel, Dave Laurie, Neil Donnell from the band Chicago, this is Brad Gillis from the band Night Ranger, and Philip Bailey, Rizzo's the Rizzo's the Night Ranger. Yeah. Eight-time Grammy Award winner, top 100 greatest drummers of all time, Kenny Aronoff with John Fogarty, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, and Elton John, Stevie Wonder, Dave Grove, Joe Walsh, John Mellencamp, John Deddy, drummer for Player, Anthrax, Testament, Volby, Mitch Malloy, and the lead singer of Great White, Pete Thorne with Chris Cornell, Melissa Etheridge, Rob Mount, drums with Lou Graham, Philip Schaus, I play guitar with Accept, I play bass guitar for Ace Fraley, Todd Morris, the offspring of Todd. Hi, Dennis. The Doors. Eric Aldini, sir from Bill Adams. Red Jones, bass player for Vonte. Phil Hart. Fuel. Michael Shaker Group. This is Josie Scott from Josie Scott's Saliva. Marky Mark with Foundry Rocks. Brian Trock. Scotty McClellan. Four-time Grammy Award winner. Chris Christian. Jay Ramsey. Heidi Merrill. Vince Van Patten. Daniel Negreanu. Greg Fossilman Raymer. Billy Hayes. Foz Davis. Rashawn Phillips. Dr. Christian Willemeyer. NASA astronauts. Mike Malay. Anthony Davis. George Stark. Dwayne Starks, Brian Mitchell, Rick Upchurch, Willie Rofe, Jim Fossil, Dwayne Clemens, Chief Schrader, Pepper Johnson, Zandre, Bad Moon, aka Rise, Brian Jordan, Bill Romanowski, Dwight Hicks, Jason McKee, Michael Keller, Fred Mitchell, Barty Appel, Tim Rando, Tom Brenneman, Barry Katz, Brad Williams, Dennis Blair, Arthur Sarkissian, Dean Edwards, Emmett Short, Jason Acevedo, Miss Christina Smith, Bruce Nahan, Lee Haney, Rick Barry, Cowboy Ninja, Lance Pekas, Andrew Williams, Don Most here, Kevin Sorbo here, How- yes. Dr. Peter McCullough, Damien Jackson, ex Navy SEAL, Margaret Carey, Tinkerbell, Stephanie Stuckey, CEO of Stuckey's Corporation, Bruce Perlowen, founder, Marijuana Inc., Medical Marijuana Inc., Hemp Inc., Glenn Gardone, president of Red Chocolate, Ronnie Nunn, Belgian Henderson, Jack Llewellyn, Ford Psychologist, Susie Hellmaker, Alexander Bardo Pinto, Bill O'Brien, Brad Server, grandson of Curly Howard, from the Three Stooges, Chris Kemper, Aaron Ron, Dark Kushner, Jose Rio in the house, Kirk Bavacqua here, Greg Olson, Matt Joyce, Jim Lambert, Mike Hollis, Brad Coleman, you know Burst, Santana Moss, Vance Johnson, Donnie Shale, Mark Collins, Brandy Grimes, Larry Bubber, Cole, Eddie Burry, Wesley Woodyard, Dexter Irvin, Colin Frazier, Andrew Ladd, Dustin Penner, Dave Jackson, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, Brian Killingsworth, Mark Oates, Don Horn, Ryan McNeil, Devon Kirkland, Chucky Kobe, Jackie Sherrill, Eddie Meter, EJ Speed, Jesse Wooten, Dave Murhar, Pete Todd, Bob Grant, Dan Pastorini, Mark Fleming, Brad Hopkins, Lee Steinberg, Steve Watson, Dan Vincent, Mitzi Dolan, Karen Lowe, Lori, Bo Campbell, Glenn Elmore, Mark Eaton from the Utah Jazz, Charles Smith, Chucky Brown, Aubrey Hunt, Jock Joe, John Nyland, Mandy Van Slyke, Matt Starr, Dr. George Gauthier, Terry Shirt, Jesse Sapolo, Data Stubblefield, Jeff Rago, Jeff Jagger, Gino Toretta, Jim O'Brien, Gary Justin, JT Thompson, Jim Everett, John McLaren, Brad Boone, Mel Stottlemyre, Alan Massengale, Francisco Dawson, Kurt Sandoval, Matt Gracie, Bailey Brom, Leonard Marshall, Gary Reasons, Doug Plank, Everson, Walls, Jim McNally, Shemmy Shembeckler, Kurt Walk, Leroy Irvin, Icky Wood, Tyrone Poole, Alicia Thompson, Chris Duhonker, Scott Petrick, Bruce Crampton, Bush Bear, Joe Koff, Kristen Rhodes, John Jusco, Mayor Carolyn Goodman, John Lee, Mayor of North Las Vegas, Amy Wilson, Nick McKay, Voice of Salem Saberhagen, the Talking 
Cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The father of the first family of drag racing. John Ford. Ricky Stenhouse. Ben Brost, the voice of stock car racing. Robbie Wells, seeking the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. Jim Strasser, founder and CEO of Cali Strong, the California sports company. CEO of uh, LA Gear, Nike, Oakley, Quicksilver, owner partners of Converse. Shea Hillebrand. Carl McDowell. Jamie Baker. Carlos Munoz. Darius Casparitis. Dominic Roussel. Oh, Christy. Emery Moorhead. Kyle Turley. Dave Robinson. Jeff Ryan. Leroy Irvin. Eric Hipple. Mike Kaminsky. Matt Doherty. Greg Kite. Dan Clark. Nitro. American Gladiator. Manny Sangian. Marlon Green. Emery Moorhead. Ricky L. Kyle Washington. Mitch Workman. Brett Lashbrook. Chesty LaRue. Scotty Graham. Joe Robinson. Chris Dishman. Gary Robinson. Catcher Bill. Ward Brewster. Randy Barnes. Anastasia Valentine. Daryl Evans. Big Theo Ratliff. Dr. Edwards. Adrian Goodson. Cedric Tony. Ricky Pierce. Hey, well. Good morning. Rusty Spindell. Carl Mecklenburg. Mark Curier. Toy Cook. Mercury Morris. Eric Davis. Thomas Hollywood. Henderson. Harold Jackson. Chris Lacey. I'm Eric Bigger. Dennis Schrappaport. Rich Murata. Steve Lott. Michelle Corrales Lewis. Brace the Beast. Aleem. Joe Cortez. Mark Taffy. Chris Ferg. Caleb Sweetheart's Plant. Bronco <laughs> Billy Ride. <laughs> If you're watching the Sports Circus, and I am Brian Erlacher. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind for less than a buck a day. Legal Shield can help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, contracts given to you that you don't understand or maybe you were socked in the mouth by a giant lineman from the nfl or the canadian league you never know and you need a lawyer call legal shield they can help for less than a buck a day give them a call right now 213-245-1305 that's 213-245-1305 again 213-245-1305 or visit them at nocourt.us and tell them the sports circuit sent you And welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu all the way to New York and down into the Florida Panhandle. A bunch of points in between as well. And, folks, we have a very special guest. In fact, we're going to let him introduce himself. Hey, guys. How y'all doing this evening? This is Antico Dalton, linebacker, former linebacker, National Football League, Canadian Football League for nine seasons. Excited to be on the show tonight. Yes! <laughs> Antigo, thanks for joining us. Listen, man, you have certainly made your rounds from the from, – let's, let's go all the way back to Hampton. Now, Hampton, it's about, about, about a four-hour drive or so for where you're from. Yeah, it's about, about a right? four-hour drive from my hometown in Eden, North Carolina. Uh-huh. Now, how did you arrive yeah. at, at going to Hampton? I mean, look, you were obviously a, a really large guy coming out of school. I mean, look – you know, at least of that 250 range, whatever, 6'1-ish, but a very large human. Why did you select Hampton? Were there, were there other places maybe thought about going, or was that really what your target was from the beginning? Right. You know, I, I tell you, I had a, quite a few opportunities coming out of high school, you know, and um, I took a few official visits, you know, like like some schools, but Hampton just won me over, you know, just the, the family atmosphere, the environment there, the opportunity to come in and play right away, and um they kept me in my natural position. They gave me opportunity to play linebacker, and so I embraced it. You know, went there and had a wonderful time there, four years there, and um, <clears throat> had pretty good success. We had some great coaches there, a lot of good teammates, built a lot of relationships over the years, and I still keep in contact with most of the guys to this day. That's awesome. So from that yeah. time, now you had, a, you had a really good opportunity, and you took advantage of it too. Playing in college is one thing. Now, playing in, obviously, the NFL is another thing. Playing in the Canadian League is another thing. Playing in the World League is something else. Now, look, you've had a taste of three different aspects of professional football, which is it's very unusual to, to have somebody, and not only have somebody that's done that, but somebody that's actually won, mind you, a Grey Cup and also the World Bowl. I don't know of right. anybody else that's actually done that. Uh, you might be the only one that I know of. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you, it was a great experience, you know, for me to get the opportunity to play the game that I love 
you know, and, and get paid to actually do it, you know, no matter the level, you know, professional, from NFL to Canadian Football League to NFL Europe, it was a great opportunity. It was truly a blessing. You know, I give all glory to my, my Lord and Savior for that. But um, I truly enjoyed that time. And, um, you know, again, it was a great experience. It was a dream come true. It was truly a blessing, you know, and a great time throughout those nine years. You know, I just feel blessed to have that opportunity. You know, and I, what I love to do this day is share that experience, that knowledge, with as much as I can with, you know, kids from across the country. You know, I currently coach high school football, but as a, um, a, a small business owner, linebacker university, you know, we, we, we work with kids from all across the country, you know, from our, all from the major football states in the United States, uh, football states in the country, as well as Canada. We get a draw from there as well. Um, we reach out to kids, get kids from Hawaii coming in for our three-day camp. So, you know, that, all that experience with professional football kind of molded me into what I do now as a post-football career. Okay, so Antico, where did you have, I, I have two questions, where did you have the most fun playing professional football, and what was mentally the most difficult, and why? Wow, that's, that's a great question. To answer the first part, where did I have the most fun? You know, um, wow, that's a hard one there. Um, you know, the NFL was great, you know, and um, that's definitely a dream come true and a great opportunity for me, but... It was very, very stressful, you know, and um, you can appreciate it, you know, long term. You can appreciate it now, sitting back looking at it from afar. But I guess to answer the question, the, the best times I had had to be probably in the Canadian Football League because, you know, it, it was still great competition there and the intensity was high. You know, you played against some world-class athletes there. And, and it was a situation where, for me, it felt more like a paid vacation as opposed to a job, you know. And so <laughs> I <went out> there. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. You know, we we so like I paid vacations. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's kind of what it felt like to me. You still make great money over there, but, you know, the, the, the atmosphere was a lot different, you know, than, than the culture that's in the NFL, you know, which both of them are our business. We understand that part of it, but, you know, it definitely wasn't the same type of threat. Okay. All right. Hey, Rock, do you have a question? Yeah. You look at playing linebacker, it's one of the hardest positions to play on that field. Talk a little bit about the physical preparation going in when you were in the NFL. Talk about the physical preparation throughout the week and how difficult was that and did, are you still kind of feeling it to this day? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, the preparation is key. You know, um, you know, Monday, well, Monday you come in after Sunday's game and you watch the film, you get a workout in and, you know, it's a four-day then, then you get Tuesdays off. But Wednesday and Thursday typically are the really – hard work days, you know, you, you punching the clock. I mean, you go in there, you know, as early as 7, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, and you, you may be getting home around 8 o'clock that evening, you know, so it's a full day, you know, full of, you know, a couple of practices a day, you know, film study, you know, um, uh, installation stuff, you know, everything goes to the game plan for that week, you know, for the next opponent. So it's a full day and it's, it's full of uh, mental, you know, pressure, you know, as far as, you know, in, installation and, you know, formulating the game plan, understand the tendencies of the opponent that you're going to face that week. And then the physical side of it is what you expect. You know, it's a, it's a collision sport. So that's, that's, that part of the game was pretty easy. It's just uh, the mental challenges that come with it. You find that more, more challenging than actually the physical, the physical side of itself. So I guess to answer your question, you know, the physical side is what you expect. It's the mental grind of, you know, being there every day, you know, performing, being able to have to perform at a high level, you know, and, and just compete every day. That's the part of to be more of the, the middle step of it. Well, you know, Antico, a lot of people that watch the games on Sunday, they don't realize what happens during the week. They think, well, you know, maybe they have a practice here. They're, oh, hell no. They have no clue of the work that you do through the week to get yourself prepared because these people are thinking, hey, look, I'm going to go down to my, my local watering hole and I'm going to go get my, my hot wings. I'm going to watch some football. But let's face it. They have no damn clue of how much work actually goes in. And remember, even when it comes to practice, you're basically in, in car yeah. collisions in, in your practice yeah. every time you're hitting somebody. Absolutely. You know, there is a lot of work that goes into it. And to truth be told, Sunday is more of the reward. You know, Sunday, the game day is reward because you think Monday, Wednesday and Thursday, which are the really true hard work days, you, 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 you're absolutely correct. It feels like you're leaving a game when you're done with that practice. Your body's beat down. You're mentally drained. You know, you want to go get an ice tub. You want to get a massage. You want to go home and eat and go straight to bed, you know. So those are really, <laughs> really, really tough. It's a really tough work week, you know. And, again, Sunday becomes a reward for all the, all the hard work you put in for, from that, for that week. Right, right. Rocky, you have another one? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was more. You know, you met talk. You talked about the mental side, and I think that's one of the more underrated parts. Now, when you're up in Canada with the field being a different length and a different breadth, how much of a little bit was it an adjustment for you, uh, adjusting to no, realizing, you know, on a drop? Oh wait, I got a ten extra yards I got to cover, or so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a different game up there. You know, it's, it's a lot more spread wide open. You know, you got got an extra uh, man on the field. You know, it's twelve players as opposed to eleven. The field's a lot bigger. You know, one hundred twenty by I want to say sixty, whatever it may be. You know, so there's a lot more area that you have to, as a defender, that you have to cover. You know, and um, so it's a different type of game. You know, um, you got you know obviously you, get, you got the difference in downs. You got two downs and punt on third down up there as opposed to three downs and punt on fourth down here in the NFL. So that alone speeds the game up. You know, you, you if you're, you're up there, a lot of guys will start on defense, but you also play a lot of special teams. And so you may get just as many special teams as you do defense up there because the game is so much quicker. You know, you're punting on third down. So what you're saying really is, well, I don't know if you're saying this, but it sure seems to me that there's a little bit more strategy involved in the Canadian game because there's, A, there's moving parts. There's people that are in motion, there's more people, and the yeah. rules are different in general. So it would seem like there's a lot more to learn playing the Canadian game. I like watching the Canadian game myself. I like some of the rule differences. Yeah. You know, when you talk about fair catches and kickoffs and this and that, I like that because I think back to the NFL now, and I'm like, well, geez, pretty soon these guys are just going to carry flags. They're not going to be hidden anymore. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know, it definitely is a different game. You know, and um, the physicality is what it is. You know, it's, it's, that's expected. You know, in both leagues. You know, but again, you know, it's a high tempo, fast game up there. You got the high motion. You got the guys. You know, receivers hitting the line, running full speed right at defenders. So that's that in itself is very difficult to deal with, and it's, it's a, a real adjustment. And then you got all that space out there, that bigger field. You know, so. You got to find a way to eliminate a couple things, options and space up there. And, you know, it's, it's challenging when you got, you know, fast paced offense, you know, going at you, you know, 100 miles per hour. And you, you kind of at a standstill position, you're reacting to what you're getting up there. So, <laughs> but it was good. Like I say, it was fun and exciting, but it was fast paced. And again, you know, I saw that more as a paid vacation because it was a lot more relaxed up there. Right. Right, right. I had a similar experience. I'll share it in between uh, commercial break. Folks, we're going to go to commercial break here in a minute. Hey, Antigo, when we come back, I want to hear more about linebacker you. We've got to give a big shout-out to, to your friend Jennifer as well for, for helping you out over there and also uh, just a good human yeah. being. What do you think? We'll give her a, in fact, oh, give yeah. her a nice Absolutely. big round of applause because we can. All right, folks, we're going to be back here in just a few minutes on the Sports Circle with Antigo Dalton. World Bowl champion, Grey Cup champion, a really cool guy. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come here on The Circus. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go and buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you're going to get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has the Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Too think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and boy, when a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you you sing about Cracker Jack. I said that I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some of the youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, 
Here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and all-star celebrity guests for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus the SportsCircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. Hey everybody, this is Barry Katz from the Industry Standard Podcast, and you're listening to the Sports Circus with Sal Tuzzolino. to the show. This is Antico Dawson. This segment is brought to you by Linebacker University. Linebacker University established in 2014 designed for linebacker skill specific training. Established in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are currently reached out to have kids coming from all across the country, all the major football states, even from Canada and Hawaii. Our three-day camps that we um, focus primarily on linebacker skills training. We get linebackers from the beginning First-time players to NFL players, so excited about the opportunity to work with new group. All right, and folks, make sure you check out Linebacker University. Hey, Antico, is there a website that people can go to to check this out? Yes, uh, the website is linebackercamps.com. You can find us on all the major social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Linebacker Camp. You can reach us there, and you can see all the videos and everything that we do, and um I actually have contact with the uh, the company through the through the uh, social media and the website. All right, that's great stuff, folks. Make sure you check out linebackercamps dot com. Correct? Is it camp or camps with an S? Camps with an S, yeah. Linebackercamps dot com. All right, that's for linebacker university. Great stuff. All right, so in your linebacker university organization, what is it that a three day camp looks like for the kids? Right. Well, three-day camp, you're going to get over 12 hours of on-the-field training. And if you think about a high school uh, football season, you know, I'm a high school coach myself and I'm a defense coordinator, linebacker coach and at Mount Island Charter here in uh, the Charlotte area. And basically, if you think about a typical practice, you get about 20 minutes of individual time with your linebackers or your, 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 your position group, right? Yep. Within a three-day, 12-hour, you know, training session at Linebacker University, you want to get that same amount of time that you would get in a complete whole season in high school in that three days. And what we do in that three-day period, we focus prom- we focus all the way on linebacker skills training, you know, from, you know, defending the run, you know, dropping in space, defending the pass, understanding zone coverage, angles, leverage, you know, separation drills, working in space, you know, operating in the, in the tackle box, all the things that it takes to be successful and play this position at a high level we cover, you know, and um. Throughout that weekend, we record everything that you do, you know, so we go back and we watch the film on the whole camp. We actually get into a huddle, uh, oh, huddle nice. film study. We watch the, the actual, you know, players' huddle film and kind of critique and help them. Don't get into a lot of um, the, um, the, 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 the defensive schemes. So we just really focus on the skill side for the, the linebacker himself, you know. So we get into that part of it. Um, we actually do, um, you know, just talk actually X's and O's, but more so it's skill-specific stuff, and uh, we actually – help reach out as far as the recruiting game. We, we do a little bit of that with some of the players, too. We kept, kind of help advocate for, you know, the different players that come through our program. So it's a well-rounded weekend. You know, you're going to get a lot of individual semi-private skill training because we, we really keep the, the, um, the, the, the um, camp numbers low as far as, you know, per camp. We, we know, don't know more than about 20 to 25 kids per camp, and that's the reason for that is so we can reach each and every kid at the level they are. You know, we don't want to have three, 400 kids at the camp. It's, it's possible to, to train and coach that many kids. So, so we, you know, try to keep the camp relatively small in numbers so we can really reach each and every kid as far as the skill set where they are. I think that's great. I mean, it's kind of like going to colleges and having the small class size, 
what you're doing is you're offering these kids a chance to get some real one-on-one instruction, and I like that. In fact, what I really like is that you're using, you're utilizing the film and you're integrating with Huddle because Huddle, for all you folks that don't know, Huddle is kind of like the video platform, if you will, for kids to showcase themselves. By the way, Huddle, you owe us money for the plug. But the fact is, <laughs> this this is a great platform for kids to showcase themselves. And hell, I remember back in my days of playing baseball, we never had anything like that. And the scouts, they had right. to come out to the field. And let's face it, if the scouts weren't there, buddy, you weren't going to get seen. But nowadays, with technology, and you know, the folks over at Huddle do a great job, and I like the fact that you have that integration with it, and you're really helping the kids out on multiple levels. And whether the parents even get it or not, it's not really the issue. The fact is those, those kids know more than the parents do in most cases, and they have to explain it to the parents these days because, you know, not every parent is really up to snuff with technology. Right, right. And that's the big thing, you know, um, being able to watch film and get it sent off basically on a link, you know, to all these different college couches, that, that, that really pays dividends for the kid, you know. And, and the thing about us here at Linebacker University, we try to prep, prep them to the point where they get the skill level up so when they do send those sort of films out, they see the best linebacker they could possibly see just based on skill, you know. So that's a big part of what we do. And we, we're here for the, the, the kids. We're here. The, the, the passion behind Linebacker University is really to focus on linebacker specifically skills training to help these kids when they do go on film and they present themselves, you know, before college scouts, they are presented the best possible player that they could be. Right. They got a real showcase. Folks, we're here with Antigua Dalton. It's a World Bowl champion, a Grey Cup champion, and a champion of life and also at Linebacker University. All right. So what inspired you to put Linebacker University together? You know, it's Linebacker University was birthed in 2014 by Matt Monroe, great friend of mine, great man, great football mind, played football at a high level himself, you know, and um, just really understands the game. He and I got together, you know, we were coaching together in high school football, and we just saw a need. We saw a need for, you know, you can go across the country and find, you know, camps for quarterbacks, you know, receivers, right. skill guys, but there was nothing really for linebackers, you know, so we decided to get together and, you know, put together a plan. We both had a lot of experience and knowledge of, you know, the position. So we decided to start linebacker university based off a of passion and a, and a need for, you know, kids to really get linebacker skills specific training, you know, so that's kind of where it was birth, you know, and um, we, you know, Matt and I, we both, you know, we, we, we desire to learn more and more in this business. You have to be green, you know, continue to learn the game, continue to learn the position. And, you know, we go to different seminars and stuff and we do a lot, you know, of research and, we both played, you know, between the two of us, probably over 50 years of experience between coaching, playing, and being around the game, you know. So we've, um, you know, we, we just try to take that knowledge and share it and pass it along to all the kids and really help them in their development because, again, we thought that there was a lack, you know, of, of skill-specific training, you know. And so we really wanted to kind of fill the gap in that area and just really help it, you know, make it more specific to our drive and our passion with coaching linebackers. So I have to ask you this, because the name Linebacker University, the first thing that comes to mind for most people that know anything about football is what? Let's see if you come up with the same answer as everybody else. I can't say, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I want to yeah. know, how many players that have gone through your camps have ended up at Penn State just by chance that you know of? You know what? I can't think of not one offhand, but, you know, we sent them to a lot of major, you know, colleges. Like, you know, we, I'm going to give you a round of applause for, for that. Contract. You know why I'm going to give you a round of applause for that? Because I went to well, Purdue, right. a conference rival. Oh, my goodness. Don't send them to Penn State, whatever you do. I hear you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's very cool. I appreciate that. But, yeah, man, we just, like I said, we just try to help as many as we can. That's for sure. Okay. Hey, Rock, you got another question? No, just a comment. You know, you said a minute ago, um, you guys were talking about how the specialized camps. You know, I was somebody that played a position that was outside of the norm, of the uh, you know normal camp one too. I was an offensive lineman, and I'll say this: I found three offensive lineman camps when I was in high school, and it was the most fun I've ever had. It's just me and my buddies going there and just grinding away. So, man, this is really really cool, man. I applaud you all the way for it. That's a really cool idea. I love seeing these more specialized camps, especially for not just your. Um, not just your quarterbacks and your receivers and your pretty boys getting all the attention. It's good to see some hogs and some that's linebackers right. getting the nose in the dirt, too. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Good stuff. I, I completely agree with you. And that, that, that's a big part of the side. We, there was a need for it. So we felt like, you know, we wanted to get together and just, just help in that area. And, you know, we, we, we probably the, the only skill-specific, you know, linebacker company in, in the country. And, you know, we really want to, 
you know, reach out and help as many linebackers and families as we can, you know, in the area that we can. So are there any plans to basically have a a part of the organization that would maybe do like a touring camp or a various locations across the U.S., or is it basically Charlotte and that's it? Well, you know, we've, we've been in a position where we've had a tons of kids, you know, from all across the country, and even again, you know, from Canada and Hawaii come to mm-hmm. us, you know. So, so as of now, you know, that there hasn't necessarily been a need for us to travel, you know. So we've drawn a lot of attention here, and, you know, people to travel in, and, you know, we – we house them in a hotel. We, you know, we have our own indoor training facility here. You know, so it's been really good for us. You know, the way we have it now. You know, not to say that you know down the road. You know, we may not venture out into you know a, a, a I guess a separate, a different location or whatnot. But as of now, it's been very successful for us here in the Charlotte area. We have a you know all the major we have a major airport here. You know, people can travel in and out relatively easy. Oh yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. So we're not. Yeah, it's a pretty good situation for us. Yeah, I only ask because there are some kids. That are, for example, here in the Vegas Valley. I'm in Las Vegas, and who, who doesn't want to go to Vegas? Come on, man, come out and do a camp yeah, here in know, Vegas, right? right? <laughs> It'd be a lot of fun. But yeah, you know, whether yeah. it's whether it's you know out here or in in uh, who knows even Washington State, you know, the kids on the West Coast right. they don't have a ton of options for this sort of a camp. They have a lot of offensive caps, and you, know, you see a lot of that kind of thing: quarterbacks, wideouts, whatever. But we don't see anything from the defensive side of the ball like what you're doing here and that's why i asked the question i know guys that run camps but they're general camps right even here in town and so i ask only because i think there's a need for it but i'd love to see you expand i mean you're already doing very well but if you ever do expand i think vegas is one of those places that you may want to have a look at i'll tell you what but you can you you can you can get us a a great marketing uh, plan out there and you know Connect with some people. You know, you never know what may happen. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of ties in that world. Hey, you going to stick around for us with one more uh, for one more segment? Absolutely. All right, that's great, folks. We're going to be back here in just a few minutes with Antico Dalton, Grey Cup champion, World Bowl champion. Also has a fantastic organization, Linebacker University, folks. Check it out, linebackercamps.com. Don't go anywhere. Back here in a few minutes here at the Sports Circus. <laughs> That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Attention businesses of all sizes affected by COVID-19. The federal government has introduced the Employee Retention Credit. It's a new relief program that allows you to collect up to $26,000 per employee. If your business was forced to close due to COVID-19 or you lost 20% or more of your sales, you may qualify for free financial relief. There's no limit to the amount you can file for, and you don't have to pay the money back. Call Park Settlement now. They'll explain to you how much you qualify for and how fast the funds can be in your business bank account. To find out if you qualify for the ERC program, call Park Settlement right now for details. There's no upfront cost to you, and you could receive up to $26,000 per employee. Call right now for details. 800-509-1238. 800-509-1238. 800-509-1238. That's 800-509-1238. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York, 
Also, The Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and The Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Hey there, it's Nick McKay. You may know me as the voice of Salem Saberhagen, the talking cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You're listening to the Sports Circus. It's, uh, I'm on a... Calliope, get me out of here. I'm scared. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you by Kelly Vegas, helping people just like you create and host your very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Kelly Vegas can help you with everything you need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic like you're doing right now and host your very own talk show in your very own studio. Call Kelly Vegas at 949-445-1119. That's 949-445-1119. Again, 949-445-1119. Or visit them at kellyvegas.com. That's C-A-L-I Vegas.com. And tell them your ringmaster sent you. Yes. And welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, Spotify, as well as those streaming the show live at thesportscircus.com. Of course, that goes through our NBC affiliate in Los Angeles. And welcome back with Antico Dalton, World Bowl champion, Grey Cup champion, and let me ask you a question. Antico, about playing, I want to know what is the goofiest thing you've ever seen happen on the field? Now, whether you're a part of it or wow. not, what is the craziest thing you've uh, ever seen? Like, man, you can't plan that. You know, um, being in the National Football League and in professional football in general, some of the more comical things happen on special teams. You know, you may not see it firsthand, but when you go back and watch the film, you can see some amazing stuff. And some of the some of the craziest things I've seen was some of the blind shot, the blind you know blind side shots running down on the kickoff. You know I've been a part of some of those, and I've also you know delivered some of those. So you know I've seen guys get depleted, you know almost <laughs> cartwheels, backflips, just not see the guy coming. It's like a heat sticking, sticking so missile, depleted. and you just see a sniper just take him out. So those are some of the more funnier things I remember. You know you may not see it right right there in live and in person, but when you go back and watch that film, you're like wow, what happened there? You know so. He's- those are some of the highlights I can think of right offhand, but yeah, those are pretty amazing plays. He said depleted. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff, man. All right, what about playing in Edmonton? Now, look, you've got obviously yeah. you've got a little bit of weather difference. You have a different everything going on over there. You have a bigger field, different dynamics, guys going full speed at the snap of the ball. What about up there? There has to be some things that stood out there. You scratch your head, like, did that just happen? Yeah, you know, um, you know, outside of the weather, I mean, it's bone chilling cold up there. You know, at parts of it during the season, you know, during the winter part, and um, you know, but the game itself, you know, I think, you know, it's just again, it goes back to one of the more craziest things I saw was the first time I saw a drop kick. You know, you see a guy trying <laughs> a field goal. You know, that right there in itself was something like, what is that legal? Can you do that? You know, so and then you see a guy, you know, you kick a field goal and. He got a return at the back of the end zone. He catches it and runs it back 120 yards for a touchdown, you know. So I'm like, what am I playing here? You know, so those two things were the first two things that I saw that really threw me off. I was like, wow, this is a completely different game up here. So those two things come to mind right away. 120 yards. Rock, imagine that, seeing somebody run it back 120 yards, and they're stopping basically at the 60-yard line because they're already sucking wind. I was about to say, I'm an old, ho- I'm an old exactly. hog, man. I'm gassed already just thinking about it. Right, right. That's unbelievable. All right, so yeah. so so give me your favorite moment in playing Canadian football. But besides, you know, hoisting a trophy, what's your favorite moment? Yeah. What's the most memorable thing that stands out 
playing Canadian football. You know, you mentioned the Great Cup. That was a phenomenal time, a great opportunity there. And, you know, I never, you never forget those times. But, you know, I guess, I guess if I had to make a, find a more memorable moment, it probably was my very first game there. You know, um, when you run out there on the field and, you know, you, you, you go through first down and they call punt alert, you're thinking, punt alert, this is his first down. You know, you normally get that on third down in the NFL. So, you know, they call him punt team on second down. And I ran out there. I'm like, well, you know, it just it seems so weird to me, you know, just <laughs> being out there so quick. And then you go right from left to right to defense, and two plays later, you know, you back off the field. So that that right there was an adjustment in itself. It almost seems like the, the Canadian football players almost have to be better conditioned because they're running all over the place. And by the way, the field's bigger, but there's a lot more going on and there's a lot more possibilities, a lot more what ifs. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very high tempo game up there. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, though. You know, yeah, you know, I love the NFL and I love the Canadian football league. They both had their unique moments, you know, but. The Canadian football itself, you know, with the high tempo, you know, fast motion coming at you, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you find a, a lot of challenges there. But it's fun. You know, it's fun. I, again, I look at that as a paid vacation for a number of reasons. But, you know, just the exciting times, the great time, memories there, you know, and the lifetime relationships I had there. Now, I would imagine because of, well, because of motion and everything else that happens on the field, I would, I can see this. I could see some Canadian players maybe either later in the careers or maybe the guys that couldn't make the big club, so to say, maybe they're on a practice squad or something, maybe they go to the arena league only because of the high tempo. Does that seem reasonable? You know, yeah, that's very yeah, accurate to a degree. You know, I think, you know, what, what I, my experience in the NFL was, I'm, not, I'm sorry, in the CFL was there was two types of people outside of the Canadian athlete himself. It was the, the American guy that was young that was trying to get an opportunity to play pro football, and then there was the older guys who was just trying to hang around for a few more years. You know, so that was oh, yeah. my experience up there. You know, with the American players, either the young guy that's trying to get a you know a start, or the older guy that's just trying to hang on. You know, so and I found myself in the second category, <laughs> the older guy trying to hang on. But um, <laughs> it was great, you know, and I enjoyed the experience there. Yeah, but look, I mean, you got a chance to hoist the trophy. I mean, think of a guy like last year, you know, Johnny Football, end up going there, getting moved from Team A to Team B, and he still couldn't do it. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with him? I don't, you know, th- he's not a part of this conversation. But I just think about the, you know, the first guys you said, the the young guys trying to get a shot. Maybe he was a young guy trying to get a shot because he screwed up in the NFL in the first place. But let's face it, that only goes to show the talent pool is very good up there in the Canadian League, and the product on the field is very good as well. A lot of people in the U.S. don't realize the skill level and the conditioning that it takes yeah. to play in the Canadian League. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's definitely you have to be very conditioned there. You know, you mentioned you, you said something about the talent level there. Well, I mean, there's a ton of talent. You think of the guys. You know, when I was there, Ricky Williams was up there for a while. You know, he was the first round top, what top ten pick in the NFL. And, you know, you got guys like um, Hall of Famers like Warren Moon, you know, won a number of great cups with Edmonton, came down here, you know, became a Hall of Famer in the NFL. So the talent level is there. You know, there's a number of guys. Damon Allen, you know, Marcus Allen, uh, younger brother, you know, he was there and, you know, led playing in the league for over 20 years. You know, so the talent level is there. You know, it's just a different game, but that doesn't, you know, minimize the talent by any means. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so listen, we've got a couple of minutes left in the segment. What I want you to do is I want you to give everybody, again, the one minute – on Linebacker U, and folks, make sure you go to linebackercamps.com to learn about it. But Antigo, go ahead and tell everybody real quick a nice summary on Linebacker U. Linebacker University is designed for linebacker skill-specific training. We have small, semi-private, small group training. and We bring athletes from all across the country, even in Canada and in Hawaii, come in for a three-day camp, and it's 12 hours, over 12 hours on the field training, you know, along with film study, film review, breakdown, huddle film. You know, we really focus on skill development. There's no conditioning involved. There's nothing but skill training and development. You know, we again, we get linebackers that are first-timers to guys that are professional football players. So we, we've been doing this since 2014, and it's a passion, and we found that there was a need for skill-specific training for linebackers. So that's the passion and the drive behind it. But we have a great team. Jennifer Allison is our national uh, recruiter. Matt Monroe, my business partner, and myself, and then we have guys that come in and help us as well. But we have we formed a pretty good team, and you know we've had pretty good success. And we've reached out and you know touched a lot of families from all across the country, and we hope to continue doing that and helping as many linebackers as we can. 
I love the humble, well, we're pretty good. No, you're damn good. It's okay. You can say it. <laughs> I know everybody wants to be a little I'm bit humble, good. but... Listen, man, this is the forum to blow your horn. So if you got it, this is the time. I mean, look, you have a good team around you. You're a good human. Yeah. And look, good things happen to good people because what do they do? They give good everything to other people as well. So you just keep doing what you're doing, Antico. And I think that you know we're going to have you back probably maybe around Great Cup time. You want to talk a little bit more of that with us when, when that happens? That'd be awesome. I'd love to be back. All right. That sounds fantastic. Folks, that was Antico Dalton. And as a great cup champion, also a World Bowl champion, make sure that you check out linebackercamps.com. That's linebackercamps.com. Hey, is there a phone number, by the way, Antico, for anybody to call? Yes, absolutely. You can reach us at 704-999-1148. 704-999-1148. Folks, write it on your leg, tattoo it on your arm. Go ahead and give the number one more time. 704-999-1148. All right, folks, that was Antico Dalton. Make sure you check him out. Really cool guy. And, folks, that's going to do it for today here in the Sports Circus. A big thanks to Antico for joining us and for Rocky running things in Chicago. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here in Las Vegas. We'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long, everyone. The Sports World. It's a circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas. You know, score, put the ball down, give it to the referee. You know, and I don't even care if you slam it down, but you don't have to dance. You don't have to call your mom on the phone. You don't have to go. (laughs) (laughs) The Sports Circus is a one-hour primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC News, and CNBC radio affiliates, plus Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Well Cable TV affiliates across North America and nationwide in upscale hotels and resorts on hotel television in all 210 Nielsen-rated markets. Just like a circus. My life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson. Jason Hooks, our player from Five Finger Death Punch. Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports The Sports Circus brings top sports and entertainment content and is delivered fully produced and is easy pass-through traffic for radio stations. Simply drop the program in your traffic manager and the full 59-minute, 50-second file will coordinate with the clock. Your local station receives up to four minutes of local avails during the Sports Circus broadcast and it's a great lead to live sports and entertainment. Well, if you're going to talk about a congressman being crooked... Why not talk about commercial products who don't do what they represent to do? Yes! Big Billy here. He certainly knows something about making things difficult on the God, competition. He's a punisher. Yeah, he just break the ribs. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I still haven't broke someone's collarbone yet in a boxing match. That's a great statement. I, I, I have not broke someone's collarbone in the ring yet. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I'm not. Is wait. there a reason you said in the ring? Is it that you've broken collarbones just outside of the ring? You did catch that, that, right? He said in the ring. Yeah, exactly. So like, he got him on the curtain. He got him on the edge of the ring and broke yeah. his collarbone. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circuit. I had to get Sal's name right. <laughs> well, that yeah, never, Sal, that's that's Sal never floor sweeper. That's his new name. Sal the bookkeeper. <laughs> yeah, hey, but, but even my name, name, even my so last name. Add that one to the bank, you know? But no, Alicia, you even got my last name wrong. That's well, why I, I said my name. I know it starts with bleeding. a V. It starts with a V. He said a V. Really? Look, where's the punch sound? You know, 400 punches. <laughs> Here's the punch sound. <laughs> right. Exactly. Here's a real, look, he almost knocked out the microphone. <laughs> Alicia, that, that's why they have cue cards, right? That's what that's, you know, So don't, don't let the name bother you. Just just bring a cue card with you next yeah, time. Yeah, but people can't read my name off a cue card. Or change your name to Joe Smith or something. Jeez, make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sal Tuzzolino, host and remaster of the Sports Circus. Why listen to the same old dog and pony show that you've heard all day long? The Sports Circus covers everything that other shows don't or are too scared to cover. There's no primetime show like it on air that'll punch you in the mouth. <laughs> And you'll beg for more. (laughs) Also, you could call in and participate with our chaos if you dare. Join me and celebrity guests for Havoc and Mayhem. Remember, folks, it's a circus, and we prove it every day. 
I want to try to instill some of this winning environment for this particular team. What's been your experience? Kevin, we're going to start with you. What was your experience going from Team A to Team B and bringing that Super Bowl experience to the next team? You know, they were kind of getting on me and wanting me to chill out a little bit, not play a game on a Wednesday and Thursday. But I always felt that, you know, you got to play at game day speed on Wednesday and Thursday so that you're instinctive and you can play on game day speed on game day. The Sports Circus is received well on all radio formats and is currently aired on sports, news, and music stations. Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hayne, Jim Jeffco, Ron Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker. Brett Saberhagen. It's a circus and we prove it every day. Aaron Fink. Breaking Benjamin. Jason Hartlett. Drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent. Matt Starr. Drummer for East Fairly from Kiss. Phil Buckman. The bass player in the rock band Fuel. Hey, brother. Hey, we know quality content is hard to find, so if you're ready to have the Sports Circus in your market, give us a call right now at 714-948-0100, that's 714-948-0100, or email us at info at thesportscircus.com, that's info at thesportscircus.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long everyone.